Favored for its lack of hypoglycemic side effects, metformin is widely recommended as a safe, cost-effective, and first-line treatment for many conditions, including, but not limited to, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, polycystic ovarian syndrome, otherwise known as PCOS, as well as gestational diabetes. Now, metformin was originally extracted from French lilacs and has been used as a medication to lower blood glucose for almost 60 years. Over time, metformin has been successfully synthesized in a laboratory and is now commonly used to lower blood glucose for people living with type 2 diabetes. Now, metformin has multiple mechanisms of action, which affect different tissues in various ways. The medication mainly interacts with your small intestine, with your liver, and with your muscle. In your small intestine, metformin acts by reducing the rate of glucose absorption into your blood. This reduces the net amount of glucose that enters your blood when you eat food, which helps you reduce your blood glucose values following a meal. Patients with type 2 diabetes often suffer from increased endogenous glucose production, otherwise known as EGP, which is the production of glucose from your liver. Reducing the rate at which your liver puts glucose into your blood is a very effective strategy to prevent unwanted blood glucose elevations. Metformin does this. It acts by reducing the rate at which your liver exports glucose into circulation, and therefore it decreases effectively the amount of glucose that comes from your liver into your blood. By reducing this rate of EGP, less glucose enters your blood from your liver, contributing to a lower blood glucose value in addition to the effects in your small intestine. In your muscle, the action of metformin is not fully understood. Despite this, scientists have observed that metformin treatment results in the activation of an intracellular low energy signal known as AMPK, which is AMP kinase. And that promotes an increased uptake of glucose from the blood. So metformin comes in both immediate acting and time release tablets, which can be prescribed depending on your particular needs. And metformin is usually prescribed in a smaller dose twice a day or in a single larger dose that can be taken with food. The typical starting dose of metformin is about 500 milligrams twice a day or 850 milligrams once a day taken with food. A common practice is for doctors to begin at this dose and then increase by 500 milligrams per week over the course of a few weeks as necessary. The recommended maximum daily dose of metformin is approximately 2,500 milligrams per day. So it's a highly prescribed diabetes medication, the first line of defense for the type two diabetes standard of care and a medication that people desperately need to survive, right? Well, not so much. And that's why we're going to be taking the lens to metformin. So strap on your seatbelt and let's do a deep dive into everything that you need to know about this particular pharmaceutical medication. Now let's start at the beginning. Imagine that you've been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. This is something that you thought would never happen to you. You might be a little bit overweight. Let's say you're somewhere between 10 and 50 pounds overweight. And you're aware of the fact that losing weight may help you reverse the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes which is what we talk a lot about on this channel, and it's called insulin resistance. You might enjoy a little bit of cheat foods. You might have some tasty desserts, or you might have a few drinks every once in a while. But you don't fit the picture of type 2 diabetes that you've had in your head for many years. You don't fit the picture of type 2 diabetes that you see other people living with. It's a shock. It's confusing. It's emotionally scary. So you turn to your doctor because he or she is a medical professional and they can help you understand what to do to prevent things from becoming worse. Your doctor orders lab tests, checks your fasting blood glucose and your A1C level, and then uses their extensive medical training and the algorithm in their head to determine that you actually fit directly into the criteria for type 2 diabetes, which is that your A1C is greater than 6.5% or your fasting blood glucose is 126 milligrams per deciliter or greater or you take an oral glucose tolerance test and your two hour blood glucose is 200 milligrams per deciliter or more, or you take a random finger stick blood glucose at any time of the day and the result is 200 milligrams per deciliter or more. Chances are your doctor is likely to diagnose you with type two diabetes based on an A1C greater than 6.5% or a fasting blood glucose of 126 milligrams per deciliter or greater. And when that happens, they crank an advanced algorithm in their head again to determine what other health conditions you may have, including, but not limited to, things like hypertension, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, evidence of arterial plaque, obesity, especially in your visceral or trunk area, elevated liver enzymes, damaged kidneys, and more. 
And after putting the whole picture together, they decide that metformin is the most logical choice for medication to help lower your blood glucose. Now, common brand names for metformin in the United States include things like Glucophage, Glucophage XR, Glumetza, Fortimet, or Riomet. Now, most of the time, they don't provide you with any ideas or any descriptive ways to reverse the underlying cause that caused type 2 diabetes in the first place, again, called insulin resistance. So you just start blindly taking metformin because your doctor told you to, and you do it because you're scared that if you don't, that things could get worse. Unfortunately, after a few days or weeks, the side effects begin to kick in. Gastrointestinal problems like bloating, abdominal pain, cramping, nausea, diarrhea, general digestive discomfort or loss of appetite begin to happen. You can also develop a vitamin B12 deficiency or lactic acidosis, both of which can be slightly harder to diagnose and can take some time to develop. Lactic acidosis in particular is not common in patients taking metformin and often occurs in patients with either a pre-existing medical condition that came before the use of metformin. In non-diabetic patients, lactic acidosis is associated with infection, cancer, liver failure, and renal failure. And in patients with type 2 diabetes, lactic acidosis is strongly associated with heart failure. Scientific evidence demonstrates that the most common causes of lactic acidosis are sepsis, liver disease, and respiratory failure. But enough about lactic acidosis. The most important thing is that if you feel worse with metformin than you did when you were first diagnosed, but you're still reassured that metformin is the right way moving forward and you continue to use it, you just decide, you know what, I'm going to soldier on it and just keep going. Or maybe the GI problems actually get worse over the course of time. And you might get prescribed another batch of a different medication to combat these side effects. And that's just the start of it because there may be more medication on the way. Now, side note, in 2020, there was a metformin recall that we have to talk about. The metformin recall happened because several brands of the drug were found to contain a compound known as N-nitrosodimethylone, which is NDMA, at higher levels than is generally accepted by the FDA. This contamination was first discovered in metformin brands by Apotex Corp. Later, NDMA contamination was found in seven lots of the time-release metformin hydrochloride extended release tablets by another company called Amneal Pharmaceuticals. The FDA classifies NDMA as a probable human carcinogen, which is a cancer-causing agent, and sets the standards for the maximum amount of the, a contaminant that's allowed in any medication. The most recent recall was voluntary by Amneal Pharmaceuticals to ensure that all lots are below the acceptable limits that are set forth by the FDA. NDMA contamination typically happens when medications containing metformin are produced in a laboratory environment, and cross-contamination can occur during the manufacturing process, as NDMA can also be introduced as a byproduct of the chemical used to make a specific medication. So you may not know that metformin is actually not as safe as you might think, because again, if your doctor gives it to you and it's the first line of defense, then what could possibly go wrong? But now I want you to focus on what happens even if you decide that you're going to take metformin and deal with some of these not so fun side effects. Now, for many of us, after three to six months of using metformin, you'll return to the doctor and you'll get another comprehensive blood test to measure your fasting blood glucose and your A1C once again. Now you listen to your doctor's instructions. You're feeling proud of yourself because you listen to your doctor and you're taking your health seriously. But your fasting blood glucose is only 10 points lower than it was last time it was checked. It dropped from 147 down to 137. And your A1C reduced from 7.2% down to 7.0%, which is a 0.2% reduction. And both of these indicate that you're improving, but you're still living with type 2 diabetes. But you haven't missed a single dose, you say to yourself. You took medicine perfectly, literally every single day of the week, exactly as your doctor prescribed. So shouldn't you expect better results? Your doctor then thinks for a few minutes and says, you know what? Uh, I'm going to have to increase your dose of metformin by 500 milligrams per day to get you up to 1,000 milligrams per day, or we're going to have to increase it to 1,500 milligrams per day or maybe even 2,000 milligrams per day, because you know why? That's going to have a stronger effect. So you listen and you figure, well, there must be a method to this madness, and then you continue to abide. But soon the side effects get worse, and you begin to feel helpless, but your doctor, your doctor can't be wrong, can he? Can she? Pretty soon you realize that metformin is nothing more than a fancy Band-Aid. Your doctor isn't actually giving you any solutions. They're literally just preventing your blood glucose from going higher faster. Eventually you get prescribed other blood glucose-lowering medications like sulfonyl ureas like glipizide or gliburide or glimipiride that stimulate beta cells to produce more insulin and that can cause low blood glucose and weight gain. Or maybe you're given what's called an SGLT2 inhibitor, 
like Forsiga or Invokana or Jardiance. Do these names sound familiar? And these can increase the amount of glucose that you pee into the toilet and they have side effects including urinary tract infections and low blood pressure. And you know what? If none of that works, then injecting insulin might be in your future. And trust me, that's the least attractive option of all. Now, that seems like a mi pretty miserable path, right? Trust me, we understand. As my wife Kylie likes to say, this is the medication train to nowhere. And it's a big reason why so many people die prematurely from the complications of diabetes because you take one medication that then spawns into two and then three, and then before you know it, you're taking an entire litany of medications. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full-length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.